Due to the severe heat wave, Americans should come to Europe with ultra consciousness expert. Officials are issuing safety warnings as a catastrophic heat wave continues to wreak havoc on Europe, with some areas around the Mediterranean coast seeing almost record breaking temperatures. Repeated high nighttime temperatures are particularly dangerous for human health because the body is unable to recover from sustained heat. John Nairn, Senior Extreme Heat Advisor for the UN's World Meteorological Organization, WMO. This leads to increased cases of heart attacks and death. That's not the only diseases that we see, but they're the notable ones, Nairn added. The warmest summers on record, according to the Copernicus Climate Change Service of the European Union, were in 2021 and 2022. However, scientists have warned that temperatures on Wednesday may break or even surpass that record. Many people altered their plans due to the heat wave, which occurred during the busiest summer travel period. Many people in Rome started splashing in the fountains and going in search of the enormous fans erected outside the Colosseum. According to Traveling Lifestyle, a record-breaking number of transatlantic flights are expected between the two continents after scheduling analysis by the official airline guide revealed that about 111,400 flights might leave from Western Europe for the US. According to a traveler from Norway who spoke to Reuters, the intense heat caused her legs and fingers to swell, causing her and her husband to conclude their trip early. Travelers planning to visit Europe should be ultra-conscious and aware of the circumstances there, according to Dr. Mark Siegel, clinical professor of medicine and internist at NYU Longoni Medical Center. Number one is hydration, especially since you get dehydrated on planes. If facing heat waves, you should always have a bottle of water in your hand, Siegel said. Travelers should be ultra-conscious of hydration, and whether any medication they are taking can make them sun-sensitive. The very young and the very old are more susceptible to effects of the heat. They don't have the insulation against it so keep them out of the heat as much as possible. Watch out for humidity as well as heat because it prevents you from sweating as much and cooling yourself down," Siegel further advised. Your body sweat is like a sprinkler system trying to cool you down. Replace electrolytes not just water. Although forecasters predict that Wednesday will be the warmest day, Sicily registered 115 degrees during the weekend, narrowly missing the record high temperature of 120 degrees set in 2021. Rome alone established a new record for July with a metro area temperature of 109 degrees, narrowly missing the previous record of 105 degrees set at the city's main airport. Red alert warnings have been issued for almost all Italian cities, indicating that everyone is at risk from the heat, not only vulnerable populations. While Switzerland and Greece are dealing with continuing wildfires that some have connected to the extreme heat, Spain, Greece, and portions of the Balkans, including well-known tourist destinations like Croatia and Serbia, have similarly issued red alerts, warning of a significant danger to health. Despite warnings and health action measures, 60,000 people perished from excessive heat in the summer of 2022, according to the World Meteorological Organization. Ex-Google chief warns that I might replace people in sexual and love. Why would one need another being? 
Former Google executive Mo Govdit issued a dire warning that the development of artificial intelligence might very significantly redesign love and relationships. On a recent edition of the podcast, Impact Theory with Tom Bilyeu, the former chief commercial officer of Google X made an appearance and talked with Tom Bilyeu about the potential effects of AI that simulate sex and relationships. Just think about all of the illusions that we're now unable to decipher illusion from truth, right? Sex happens in the brain at the end of the day, I mean, the physical side of it is not that difficult to simulate, okay? Govdit said. But if we can convince you that this sex robot is alive or that sex experience in a virtual reality headset or an augmented reality headset is real, then there you go, Govdit continued. He then suggested of the future, Go a few years further and think of Neuralink and other ways of connecting directly to your, ah, nervous system, and why would you need another being in the first place? Govdit continued by saying that as long as an AI can persuade the user that it is a genuine experience, whether it is genuinely sentient and self-aware is completely irrelevant. Is it a big debate whether they are sentient or not? Govdit claimed that the development of artificial intelligence may result in an inevitable transformation for society after pointing out that kids are early adopters of new technologies and may communicate with AI programs as if they were a buddy they text on Snapchat. Let's just say this is a very significant redesign of society, it's a very significant redesign of love and relationships. And because there is money in it, what would prevent the next dating app from giving you avatars to date?" he asked. Govdit exhibited skepticism when asked about the occurrence of deaths of despair in contemporary culture and whether AI companionship will eventually be beneficial or detrimental for mankind. It's just eerie. I don't know if it's better or worse," he replied. Govdit added that the current reality in the short term is that AI is not good for humanity so far, so if you extrapolate that chart it's going to be worse for humanity. Long term? I don't know, maybe those robots will be much nicer than a girlfriend. I don't know. On his website, Govdit stated that he has received recognition for early whistleblowing on AIs and regulated development and has become one of the most globally consulted experts on the topic. Govdit previously authored a book titled, Scary Smart, The Future of Artificial Intelligence and How You Can Save Our World. Elon Musk hints he is likely to change Twitter's Bluebird logo as he moves forward with his X app ambitions. Elon Musk is moving forward with his ambitions to redesign Twitter as X and claims he might replace the Bluebird logo by Monday. The billionaire announced his intention to bid adieu to the Twitter brand and, gradually, all the birds, in a series of messages on his account. The CEO of Tesla and SpaceX also uploaded a photo of himself creating an X with his hands and a little advertisement featuring the flashing X logo. It will be the biggest alteration to the social media network made by Mr. Musk since he paid $44 billion for it in October of last year. However, the businessman has been talking about releasing X, the everything app, for a while now even before he bought Twitter. He plans to create a super app, like the Chinese WeChat, that combines messaging, social networking, payments, and a lack of dependency on ad income. Teasing the launch of X in a series of posts on Twitter, he wrote, and soon we shall bid adieu to the Twitter brand and, gradually, 
all the birds. If a good enough X logo is posted tonight, we'll make go live worldwide tomorrow. He then posted a photo of the bird logo for Twitter in black and white, which Biz Stone famously dubbed, Larry T. Bird, with the remark, like this, but X. In further tweets, the billionaire added that, if X is closest in style to anything, it should, of course, be Art Deco. Later on, he added that an interim logo for X will be up, later today, and that the domain name x.com now links to twitter.com. Twitter's CEO Linda Yaccarino later said, Elon Musk and I are looking forward to working with teams and partners to bring X to the world. Twitter is currently facing competition from Meta's brand new program, Threads, which was released earlier this month, prompting Mr. Musk to modify Twitter's logo to an X. In response, Twitter threatened to sue a rival internet company that owns Facebook and Instagram for claimed copyright violations. Additionally, Mr. Musk recently unveiled his eagerly anticipated artificial intelligence startup XAI to create a competition to chat GPT. The Barbenheimer phenomenon causes sparks explosion in UK movie ticket sales. Following the debut of Barbie and Oppenheimer, according to View International, ticket sales at UK movie theaters enjoyed their best weekend in four years. The theater chain reported on Sunday that one-fifth of its patrons had bought tickets to watch both films in the Barbenheimer double bill, which was inspired by social media. Greta Gerwig's comedy about the titular doll and Christopher Nolan's historical drama about J. Robert Oppenheimer's involvement in creating the first atomic weapon have quite different plots, and both movies were released on Friday. According to the firm, more than 2,000 of View's screenings of Barbie were sold out. Cambridge, Glasgow Street Enoch, Leeds Kirkstall, Cambron, Islington, Bolton, and Portsmouth were the cinema chain's top Barbie locations. The movie, which also stars Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, will outpace Oppenheimer and Super Mario Brothers in terms of ticket sales, according to View. Tim Richards, chief executive and founder of View International, said, View saw its highest weekend admissions since Avengers Endgame in 2019 with the release of Barbie and Oppenheimer. Barbie is tracking to become the biggest film of 2023 and has a good chance of getting into the top 10 highest grossing films of all time. It is an incredibly exciting moment for the industry, and we expect this trend to continue for the coming weeks. For both movies, the nationwide theater network had more than 4,000 sellout showings. Over 200,000 advance tickets had been purchased, and over 10,000 people were anticipated to attend the opening weekend of both movies, according to Odeon's release on Thursday. Oppenheimer, starring Killian Murphy and Florence Pugh, has reportedly generated £8.05 million in the UK and Ireland since Friday, according to Universal Pictures. Barbie had the greatest opening weekend of any movie in North America, grossing $155 million, while Oppenheimer brought in $80.5 million. Sales have skyrocketed across the pond as well. Production of Apple iPhone 15 reportedly kicks off in India. According to reports, Apple's primary iPhone maker has begun assembling the next generation of the gadget in India. According to Bloomberg News on Wednesday, Foxconn and a facility in Tamil Nadu are working together to produce the iPhone 15. The publication cited unnamed persons who were familiar with the matter. According to the source, Pegatron Corp., 
and another plant would start making identical preparations for the next generation gadget in India shortly after Foxconn. According to reports, Apple plans to cut the time between the shipment of iPhones assembled in China and those assembled in India even further in 2023. According to Bloomberg, Foxconn shipments of iPhone 15s produced in India may only lag those from China by a few weeks. To lessen its reliance on China for such activities, the corporation has recently started turning increasingly to India for production. 7% of iPhones are now made in India, according to a Bloomberg article from April. According to earlier speculations, the much-awaited iPhone 15 might be released in September. During that month, Apple frequently has an event where it introduces new products. The previous one occurred on September 7, 2022. Apple's net sales from iPhones for the third quarter came in at $39.67 billion, which was less than Refinitiv's forecast of $39.91 billion. According to the business, they decreased by 2.4% on an annual basis. In terms of demand, iPhones have had a great performance in emerging economies, according to Apple CFO Luca Maestri, who noted that many of them, including India, have had quarterly records broken by the device. Indonesia, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East were among additional regions with significant iPhone demand. The U.S. smartphone market, meanwhile, has been in a decline for the last couple of quarters, he said. Apple may unveil a new model of the Apple Watch at the anticipated event next month in addition to the iPhone 15. The Russian president's retaliation against his chef was best enjoyed cold. The sight of a jet shot down by Yevgeny Prigozhin's soldiers crashing to earth was one of the most memorable scenes during his military uprising. Vladimir Putin will be hoping that the alleged murder of Wagner commander Yevgeny Prigozhin will put an end to the group's alleged effort at revolt earlier this summer and ward off further threats to his leadership. According to reports, there was a gruesome symmetry between the video and the sight yesterday of the jet crashing through the skies north of Moscow while he was aboard. That may have been the goal all along. Two months after the incident that called for it, payback for the Russian president was truly a dish best served cold when it came to the man they nicknamed Putin's chef. The message is still the same whether he planned the specifics or left it to the Slavaki or secure Kratz, that Prigozhin had targeted with his coup. Treason is not rewarded. There was no reason to think that Prigozhin would wind up being an exception to Putin's policy of never tolerating traitors. He will be hoping that the alleged killing will put an end to that embarrassing rebellion, scare off future threats, and strengthen his control, which the attempted coup had already begun to erode. The likelihood would worry Ukrainians who believe the revolt would first bring Putin to an end and then, if it failed, at least weaken him. But the fact that Prigozhin is almost certainly dead will nonetheless bring about feelings of happiness throughout Ukraine. He was the one who recruited soldiers with the promise of freedom if they survived six months on the war lines and sent thousands of Russia's worst criminals beyond their borders. They were dispatched to support Putin's destructive invasion, wipe off the Ukrainian population, and demolish their cities. One of the prisoners was given back as part of a prisoner exchange after he defected to the Ukrainians. Wagner gave him Yevgeny Prigozhin's favorite method of execution as retribution. 
A sledgehammer was used to smash his skull after it had been put on a cinder block. The Wagners gleefully posted a video of the appalling conduct on social media. That is the type of terrible private army that Prigozhin assisted in building and afterward used to hire mercenaries to rape, pillage, and massacre people throughout Africa before Putin requested their assistance in reviving his war in Ukraine. However, Wagner was helpful to the Russian soldiers during an offensive. Currently, Russia's primary concern is defense. Its troops have been mining and digging fortifications along a 1,000-mile front for the whole summer. The Ukrainian counteroffensive has so far been unable to penetrate such defenses. The conflict is now at a standstill. Ukrainians worry that up to 15% of their country will always be under occupation. Even if Prigozhin is no longer alive, in their eyes, there are still many more demons from where he came from that are wreaking havoc on their nation and becoming harder and harder to expel. Radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear facility started to be pumped into the ocean. The Fukushima nuclear plant's operator has begun discharging radioactive wastewater into the ocean. On Thursday, Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings broadcast live from a control room at the plant when a staff member turned on a saltwater pump to start the contentious project, which is anticipated to run for decades. Japanese fishing organizations have rejected the initiative because they are concerned about possible damage to their seafood. Additionally, groups in South Korea and China have expressed worry. The water must be released, however, according to the Japanese government and plant managers, to create a place for the facility's decommissioning and to avoid unintentional leaks. According to the government, after treatment and dilution, wastewater will be far less harmful to the environment and safer than required by international standards. The UN nuclear watchdog approved the measure last month. The publication starts more than 12 years after the nuclear meltdowns in March 2011 that were brought on by a massive earthquake and tsunami. The first batch of the treated, diluted water is transferred from a mixing pool by the active pump to a secondary pool, where it is subsequently released into the ocean via an underwater tunnel. On Thursday, 460 tons will be transferred in a batch to the mixing pool for the actual discharge. After treatment, some of the water is collected and used as cooling water. The remainder is held in about 1,000 tanks, which are now 98% full of their 1.37 million ton capacity. The new facilities required for the decommissioning procedure must be built on top of those tanks, which cover a large portion of the plant complex, according to authorities. The fisheries, tourism, and economy of Fukushima are concerned about the leak since they are still recuperating from the tragedy 12 years ago. Due in part to a fall in the fishing population, the region's current fish catches are only around one-fifth of what they were before to the crisis. According to authorities, China has strengthened its radiation inspections of Japanese goods from Fukushima and nine other regions, blocking exports at customs for weeks. This morning, the Prime Minister of South Korea, Han duk Su, requested Japan to provide information on its wastewater outflow from the plant for the next 30 years responsibly and openly. Meanwhile, China's Nuclear Safety Administration on Thursday called the Japanese government extremely selfish and irresponsible in forcibly launching the discharge, putting its own selfish interests above the well-being of all mankind.
Kremlin concealed Prigozhin's burial to prevent making him a martyr. Despite the Wagner Group leader's burial last week, a U.S.-based research group claims that the Kremlin is still concerned about Yevgeny Prigozhin's popularity in Russia. The Kremlin deliberately made Prigozhin's funeral a secret to avoid further making him a martyr, according to two acting officials inside the FSB and the presidential administration, who talked to two Russian media, including the Moscow Times, according to the Institute for the Study of War. According to the article, senior Kremlin and FSB officials got together to develop a plan that would prevent any chance of public outcry or protest and mislead the public about the location of Prigozhin's burial. The ISW also mentioned many Russian military blogs that said Moscow may have deliberately avoided covering the burial to keep it as low-key as possible. What little coverage there was was sometimes muddled and conflicting, with several stories claiming the funeral was held in several locations, which the ISW believes might not be a coincidence. The ISW and the Moscow Times reports have not been independently confirmed. North Korea simulates a scorched earth nuclear attack on South Korea. Targets all around South Korea were the subject of a mock nuclear scorched earth attack by North Korea. The practice is in reaction to joint exercises this week by South Korea, Japan, and the US which Pyongyang has frequently criticized as war drills. State media provide unusually detailed descriptions of how the North sees a potential conflict. The exercise simulated fending against an unexpected invasion, attacking a neighbor with nuclear weapons, and then advancing to seize territory. According to the scenario, Simultaneous super-intense strikes were also made on South Korean ports, operational airfields, military command centers, and other targets. North Korea also launched two short-range ballistic missiles into the ocean on Wednesday, only hours after the U.S. sent out B-1B bombers for joint air drills. That late-night launch followed two unsuccessful attempts to put a spy satellite into orbit. Kim Jong-un's secretive state has been condemned by Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, who told reporters, These conducts pose threats to peace and stability of not only our country, but of the region and international community, and cannot be tolerated. The Japanese government has made it clear that it will shoot down any North Korean missiles that pass over its soil. With the US, South Korea and Japan's leaders being referred to as gang bosses, who raise the possibility of nuclear war in the area, Kim has been pressing his military to become more and more prepared. For the first time in centuries, a green comet will streak through the sky on Earth. A comet that hasn't been observed on Earth for more than 400 years will soon be visible to those in the Northern Hemisphere. According to a report from the Associated Press, the uncommon green comet, known as Nishimura after the amateur Japanese astronomer who discovered it in mid-August, is roughly half a mile in size and will pass within 78 million miles of Earth on September 12. To have a chance of seeing Nishimura, people in the Northern Hemisphere must get up about 90 minutes before dawn and look north, about 10 degrees above the horizon, near the constellation Leo. As Nishimura approaches the sun, it will brighten and then become harder to see as it descends lower in the sky. The Associated Press was informed by Paul Chodas, 
the director of NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, that anybody wishing to view the comet on September 12 should be ready. You really need a good pair of binoculars to pick it out, and you also need to know where to look, Chodas said. On September 17, Nishimura will pass closer to the Sun than Mercury and, if it does not disintegrate during its visits to the Sun, will leave the solar system. The comet, according to Chodas, is likely to survive its passage, and, if it does, it will be visible to observers in the Southern Hemisphere somewhere towards the end of September. The comet last came this near to Earth in the Northern Hemisphere 430 years ago, according to Italian astronomer Gianluca Massi, who founded the Virtual Telescope Project. He stated to the Associated Press that next week would be the last feasible chance to observe the comet. The comet looks amazing right now, with a long, highly structured tail, a joy to image with a telescope, he added. The article claims that considering the number of professional sky surveys that make use of strong ground telescopes, discoveries of this nature made by amateur astronomers are uncommon. Ten. Oh, 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 people thought missing following major flooding in Libya. The International Federation of the Red Cross IFRC, reports that after significant floods in Libya, almost 10,000 individuals are believed to be missing. More than 1,000 dead have been found so far. Flood waters submerged a fifth of the eastern city of Derna after dams broke during a storm. Up to 2,000 fatalities are thought to have occurred in Derna alone. More than 200 dead were reportedly interred on Monday in one cemetery, according to locals, while video captured in a hospital yard showed dozens more remains lying on the ground. The city has been designated a disaster area by the Eastern Libyan administration. Along Wadi Derna, a river that flows through the heart of the city after descending from the mountains, whole residential neighborhoods were destroyed. Mediterranean storm Daniel led to heavy rainfall and floods broke dams. Multi-story apartment buildings that stood well back from the river partially collapsed into the mud. Tamer Ramadan, head of the IFRC in Libya, said, We can confirm from our independent sources of information that the number of missing people is hitting 10,000 so far. The death toll is huge and might reach thousands. Conditions in Libya are as devastating as the situation in Morocco, Mr. Ramadan said. Othman Abdul Jalil, East Libya's health minister, said Derna was inaccessible and bodies were scattered across it, Libya's state-run news agency reported. The situation was more significant and worse than we expected. An international intervention is needed. He was quoted as saying. Alien corpses, displayed in glass cases shown to politicians in Mexico. Politicians in Mexico have reportedly been shown two supposed, non-human, extraterrestrial bodies. In a hearing that has generated excitement among UFO, unidentified flying object, aficionados, the mummified specimens were on display in glass cases as part of a formal reveal in Mexico's Congress. Politicians were informed that they were discovered in the Peruvian city of Cusco and were thought to be 1,000 years old. Jamie Mawson, a journalist and UFO researcher organized the event in Mexico City. According to Mexican media, he testified under oath that the specimens about one-third of their DNA is unknown, and that they are not products of our terrestrial evolution. These specimens are not part of our evolutionary history on Earth, 
he said in his presentation to Mexican government officials and representatives from the U.S. They are not beings recovered from a UFO crash. Instead, they were found in diatom, algae, mines and subsequently became fossilized. However, Mr. Mawson's 2015 claim that a mummified body, allegedly that of an extraterrestrial, had been discovered close to Nazca, Peru, was subsequently disproved since it was discovered to be a human infant. Speaking to the group from Mexico City on the most recent find, Mr. Mawson said that the specimens had undergone examination at the Autonomous National University of Mexico. He claimed that one had eggs within, as shown by X-rays, and that experts had used radiocarbon dating to acquire DNA proof. Representatives in Congress stated that the material had given them thoughts and concerns, as well as the want to continue talking about this. Also, there was Ryan Graves, a former U.S. Navy pilot who stated in July that the number of UFOs or UAPs, unidentified anomalous phenomenon, was grossly underreported. The Roswell UFO incident, which continues to be the subject of hypotheses today, was commemorated last year on its 75th anniversary. According to conspiracy theories, an extraterrestrial spaceship is thought to have crashed in the New Mexico desert in 1947, perhaps resulting in the retrieval of alien remains that the American government is supposed to have covered up. El Chapo's wife was freed from U.S. captivity after less than two years in prison. After serving less than two years in jail for her role in his multi-billion dollar criminal enterprise, the wife of Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo, Guzman was released from U.S. federal custody. As part of a plea agreement with the prosecution, Emma Coronel Aceboro will now endure four years of supervised release. In November 2021, the 34-year-old woman received a three-year jail term. Before her release, she was transferred in June from a federal prison in Texas to a halfway house in Long Beach, California. Coronel Aceboro, who admitted to money laundering and conspiring to distribute cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, and marijuana for importation into the U.S., expressed true regret for any and all harm at her sentence. She was detained in February 2021 at Dulles International Airport and later found guilty by a jury in Washington, D.C., of charges related to narcotics trafficking and money laundering. Prosecutors claim that she contributed to her husband's 2015 complex prison escape scheme, which involved a tunnel excavated beneath a Mexican jail. They said she made this escape possible by carrying a GPS watch that was deftly concealed as food and enabled the tunnel workers to find and reach him with pinpoint accuracy. The Sinaloa cartel's leader, Guzman, was apprehended again the following year and ultimately found guilty of running a vast drug conspiracy that resulted in death and mayhem for more than two decades, for which he was later given a life sentence in a U.S. prison in 2019. He argued that his New York trial had been unjust and informed the judge that his case was stained. In July 2007, on the occasion of Coronel A. Spurrow's 18th birthday, the head of the drug cartel wed the former teen beauty queen. But according to a book that was published last year, he is still legally married to Alejandrina Salazar, the social worker he wed in 1977. According to reports, the governor of Sinaloa, legislators, and soldiers from Mexico's armed forces all attended the wedding reception. The couple's 10-year-old twin girls are their only children.
Canada is investigating into claims that India was involved in the murder of a Sikh activist on Canadian soil. Canada is looking into claims that India participated in the murder of a Canadian citizen and Sikh activist on Canadian territory. Sikh leader Hardeep Singh Niger was shot and killed on June 18 in front of a Sikh cultural centre in Surrey, British Columbia. Niger was a staunch advocate of Khalistan, an independent Sikh nation. India has outlawed the movement because authorities consider it to be a danger to the country's security. But in nations like Canada and the United Kingdom, where substantial Sikh communities are present, the movement still enjoys considerable support. According to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Canadian intelligence agencies are looking into claims that the death of Niger may have been facilitated by the Narendra Modi administration in India. On Monday, Trudeau informed Parliament that he had spoken with Modi on the subject last week at the G20. He said that he requested Modi's participation in the probe and informed Modi that any involvement would be unacceptable. Any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty, Trudeau said. The chief of Indian intelligence in Canada was reportedly removed as a result, according to Canadian Foreign Minister Milani Jolie. The Chief of Canada's Spy Service and the National Security Advisor have reportedly headed to India to meet with their colleagues and address the claims with the Indian Intelligence Services, according to Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc. If the claims are accurate, said to opposition Conservative leader Pierre Poiliev, they are an outrageous affront to our sovereignty. Canadians deserve to be protected on Canadian soil. We call on the Indian government to act with utmost transparency as authorities investigate this murder, because the truth must come out," Poiliev said. Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the opposition New Democrats and a Sikh, described it as disgusting and terrible. To all Canadians, this is my vow, Singh said. I will leave no stone unturned in the pursuit of justice, including holding Narendra Modi accountable. Elon Musk's brain chips company has been given all clear to start hiring for human trials. Elon Musk owned brain chip business claims it has authorization to begin hiring for human trials. An implant developed by Neuralink enables users to operate a computer mouse or keyboard with their thoughts. It would be implanted into a part of the brain that governs movement and tension. The chips, according to billionaire Musk, owner of Tesla, SpaceX, and social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, might one day benefit those who suffer from obesity, autism, melancholy, and schizophrenia. He has stated that the gadgets are so secure that he would gladly expose his kids to testing. Although Neuralink has not disclosed the exact number of participants, the initial study will concentrate on paralysis patients. It will attempt to replicate the successes of a Swiss research effort that let a paralyzed man walk once more using a so-called brain-computer interface. Two electrical implants, one in the brain and one in the spinal cord, made up that contraption. The digital bridge was wirelessly functional, and the parts fixed the man's brain's damaged link to the part of the spinal cord that regulates movement. The 2016-founded Neuralink has estimated that the study will last six years. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, which has previously voiced reservations about the brain chips, 
Approve the program for human testing. They included problems with its lithium battery, the possibility of wires spreading into the brain, and the viability of safe removal without causing brain tissue damage. The company has apparently also been under investigation for suspected violations of animal welfare, which it has refuted. There will be days of conflict because of the unprecedented Hamas onslaught on Israel. The unannounced Hamas operation began soon before 7 a.m. in Israel. Although today is Shabbat, a day of rest, and Israel is nearing the conclusion of the Jewish festival of Sukkot, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called an urgent meeting of his security cabinet to discuss how to handle this problem. In crisis it is. The Israeli military will act as though it is a war as indicated by Netanyahu. Unprecedented video shows Hamas gunmen in pickup trucks equipped with powerful machine weapons barreling through the streets of Israeli cities while wearing white headbands. This would seem to be a serious oversight on the part of Israeli intelligence. Israelis who have messaged me from their hiding spots near the border demand answers now, but the inquiry is for later. Trucks and weapons were driven over the border by Hamas after they managed to scale the typically impenetrable border walls. To carry out this operation, they must have received a lot of aid from within Israel itself as well as probably assistance from Iran and Hezbollah. Videos that have been shared on social media show Hamas members operating stolen Israeli military vehicles, which is extremely embarrassing for the IDF, a normally feared military organization. The Israeli military isn't verifying rumors or proof that some Israeli troops have been murdered and their remains have been taken by Hamas at this time. In another video, an elderly Israeli woman is seen being driven across Gaza in a golf buggy while her face is expressionless from horror. There are still days of battle ahead, even though Israel's military has already begun to attack Gaza in reprisal. This cycle of violence is different from others. It's far worse than that. They may invade on the ground. Israel's Western partners have harshly denounced the acts of Hamas. Although a peace agreement between Saudi Arabia and Israel seemed imminent, what transpires over the next several days can call that into question. Hamas may have such as its goal.